we decided to go camping in a national park for our summer vacation. It was supposed to be a fun family getaway, just us and the great outdoors. We packed up our gear and hit the road, excited for a week of adventure. The first few days were amazing. We hiked through lush forests, swam in crystal clear lakes, and roasted marshmallows over the campfire. But then, things took a turn for the worse. One day, we decided to explore a deserted trail that we stumbled upon. It seemed like the perfect opportunity to get off the beaten path and experience some true wilderness. Little did we know, it would be the beginning of our worst nightmare. As we trudged along the trail, we started to notice signs of something strange. Broken branches littered the ground, and there were strange markings carved into the trees. It was as if someone had been trying to send a message, but what that message was, we couldn't decipher. Then, we stumbled upon it, an abandoned campsite. Tents lay in tatters, cooking utensils scattered everywhere, and there were signs of a struggle. It looked like the campers had left in a hurry, but why? And where had they gone? We searched the area for any clues, but found nothing. No footprints, no tracks, nothing to indicate what had happened. It was as if the campers had vanished into thin air. As we stood there, trying to make sense of it all, a chill ran down my spine. Something wasn't right. We needed to get out of there, and fast. But just as we were about to leave, we heard it, a rustling in the bushes. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to see through the dense foliage. Was it an animal? Another camper? Or something far more sinister? Suddenly, out of the shadows emerged a figure. It was a man, his clothes torn and dirty, his eyes wild with fear. He stumbled towards us, mumbling something unintelligible. Are you okay? I asked, my voice trembling. But he didn't answer. Instead, he collapsed at our feet, unconscious. We didn't know what to do. Should we try to help him? Or leave him and get help? In the end, we decided to take him back to our campsite and tend to his wounds. But as we carried him through the forest, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. When we finally reached our campsite, we laid the man down and tried to make him comfortable. But he kept muttering about something incoherent, something about them coming for us. I didn't know what he meant, but I didn't want to stick around to find out. We packed up our things as quickly as we could and hightailed it out of there, leaving the abandoned campsite behind us. As we drove away, I couldn't help but wonder what had happened to those campers. Were they okay? Or had they met the same fate as the man we found? I may never know the answer, but one thing's for sure. I'll never forget the terror of that deserted trail and the abandoned campsite that haunts my nightmares to this day. I'm an avid camper, been at it for years. Love the thrill of venturing into the wilderness, getting away from the noise of the city. Last summer, I decided to go on a solo camping trip, just me and the great outdoors. I packed up my gear, grabbed my trusty map and compass, and headed out. I had a destination in mind, but I also wanted to explore some off-the-beaten-path areas. As I hiked deeper into the woods, the trail started to disappear. The trees closed in around me, blocking out the sunlight. But I wasn't worried, I had my map and compass, I could find my way back. Or so I thought. After a while, I realized I was lost. Panic started to set in as I tried to retrace my steps, but everything looked the same. Trees stretching endlessly in every direction, no landmarks to guide me. I kept walking, hoping to stumble upon the trail again, but the forest seemed to go on forever. And then I heard it, footsteps behind me. I froze, listening intently. There was definitely someone else out here with me. But who? And why were they following me? 
I tried to shake off the feeling of unease and focused on finding my way out of the forest. But no matter which direction I went, the footsteps followed. I picked up my pace, desperate to escape whatever was stalking me. But the footsteps kept getting closer until I could practically feel the breath on the back of my neck. I broke into a run, my heart pounding in my chest. I had to get out of here, had to find safety before it was too late. Suddenly, I burst into a clearing and saw it, the trail. Relief flooded through me as I stumbled onto the familiar path. But then I heard a voice behind me, low and menacing. Going somewhere? I turned around and saw him, a man, tall and imposing, his face hidden in the shadows. I didn't wait to find out what he wanted. I ran as fast as I could, adrenaline coursing through my veins. He chased after me, his footsteps echoing through the forest. But I was determined to escape. I pushed myself to the limit, ignoring the pain in my legs, the burning in my lungs. I had to keep going, had to get out of here alive. And then, finally, I saw it, the edge of the forest. I burst out into the open, the cool night air hitting me like a wave. I didn't stop running until I reached my car, parked at the trailhead. I jumped in, started the engine, and peeled out of there, leaving the forest and the mysterious figure behind me. As I drove away, my heart still racing, I couldn't help but wonder who that man was and what he wanted with me. But one thing was for sure, I was never going camping alone again. My partner and I, being novices, chose a nearby forest for our adventure. The thought of sleeping under the stars sounded idyllic. Little did we know, it would turn into a nightmare. Setting up the tent proved more challenging than we anticipated. We fumbled with the poles, trying to piece them together according to the instructions. But the whispers began. At first, we dismissed them as the rustling of leaves or the wind. But they persisted, growing louder and more distinct. Unease settled over us as we glanced at each other, both wondering if we were imagining things. We shrugged it off, attributing it to nerves or the unfamiliar surroundings. Yet, the feeling of being watched lingered, like unseen eyes pouring into our backs. As we continued to struggle with the tent, the whispers morphed into something more sinister. They sounded like hushed conversations, muffled but unmistakably human. My partner suggested we investigate, but every fiber of my being screamed to stay put. Ignoring my instincts, we ventured into the trees, guided by the eerie whispers. The forest seemed to swallow us whole, enveloping us in darkness. With each step, the undergrowth grew denser, tangling around our ankles like grasping fingers. Then, we saw them, figures lurking in the shadows, their features obscured by the foliage. They watched us with silent intensity, their eyes gleaming in the dim light. Fear gripped my chest as I realized we were now alone. My partner tried to approach them, calling out in a shaky voice. But they remained silent, their gazes unyielding. I pleaded with my partner to leave, to forget about the tent and retreat to safety. But curiosity got the better of us, compelling us to stay. Suddenly, one of the figures stepped forward, revealing a face twisted with malice. My blood ran cold as I met their gaze, sensing danger emanating from every pore. Without a word, they turned and disappeared into the depths of the forest, leaving us shaken and terrified. We hurried back to our campsite, abandoning the tent in our haste to escape. The whispers followed us, echoing through the trees like a haunting melody. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being hunted, that every step brought us closer to danger. As we stumbled through the darkness, our hearts pounding in our chests, I prayed for dawn to break and the nightmare to end. But the forest seemed endless, stretching on for miles in every direction. Just when I thought we couldn't go on any longer, a sliver of light appeared on the horizon. Dawn was approaching, bringing with it the promise of safety. We pushed forward, 
fueled by desperation and fear, until at last, we emerged from the forest, battered but alive. Relief washed over us as we stumbled into the open, the first rays of sunlight warming our cold, trembling bodies. We collapsed onto the ground, gasping for breath, grateful to have escaped with our lives. I'd spent years honing my survival skills, testing myself against the elements, pushing my limits in the wilderness. So, when I decided to set up camp deep in the forest to put my abilities to the test, I wasn't afraid. I was confident in my abilities, sure that I could handle whatever the wilderness threw at me. As I pitched my tent and built a fire, I relished the solitude, the quiet tranquility of the forest. But as night fell, a sense of unease settled over me. The forest seemed to come alive with strange sounds and eerie shadows, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I shrugged off my unease, chalking it up to nerves or fatigue. But as I settled down for the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sent a shiver down my spine. Then, I heard it, the faint crunch of footsteps in the underbrush. I froze, straining my ears to listen. Was it an animal? Another camper? Or something far more sinister? As the footsteps grew closer, my heart pounded in my chest. I reached for my knife, ready to defend myself if necessary. But when the figure emerged from the shadows, my blood ran cold. It was a man, his face hidden in the darkness, his movements slow and deliberate. He didn't speak, didn't acknowledge my presence. He just watched me with cold, calculating eyes. I knew then that I was in danger. I had to get out of there, and fast. But the man blocked my path, his presence looming over me like a dark cloud. Drawing on years of training, I tried to remain calm, to think of a way out. But panic threatened to consume me, clouding my thoughts and slowing my movements. I knew I had to act fast. With a surge of adrenaline, I sprang into action, darting through the trees with the skill and precision of a predator. But the man was hot on my heels, his footsteps echoing through the forest. I pushed myself harder, running faster than I ever had before. But no matter how fast I ran, the man was always right behind me, his presence a constant threat. As I ran, I searched for a way out, a path to safety. But the forest seemed to stretch on forever, a maze of trees and shadows that swallowed me whole. Just when I thought I couldn't go on any longer, I spotted a break in the trees, a glimmer of moonlight filtering through the branches. With renewed determination, I pushed myself forward, my lungs burning with exertion. As I burst into the clearing, relief washed over me like a wave. I had made it out alive, escaped the clutches of my would-be attacker. But even as I caught my breath, I knew that the danger wasn't over. I had to keep moving, keep running, until I was far away from the forest and the man who hunted me. With one last look over my shoulder, I disappeared into the night, determined to put this nightmare behind me once and for all. I decided to embark on a solo trek through the rural countryside, seeking adventure and solitude. The open road stretched out before me, promising freedom and exploration. With my backpack slung over my shoulders, I set out, eager to immerse myself in nature's embrace. The journey was peaceful at first, with nothing but the sound of my footsteps echoing through the quiet countryside. But as I neared a small town, a sense of unease settled over me. The air seemed to grow heavier, and the once welcoming landscape took on a sinister edge. As I entered the town, I was met with suspicious glances from the locals. They eyed me warily, as if I were an intruder in their midst. I tried to shrug it off, chalking it up to small-town paranoia, but the feeling lingered, gnawing at the edges of my mind. I approached a small general store to resupply, 
hoping to restock my provisions and continue on my journey. But the shopkeeper's demeanor sent a shiver down my spine. His eyes bore into mine, cold and calculating, as if he could see right through me. I brushed off his hostility and gathered what I needed, eager to leave the town behind. But as I turned to go, I overheard snippets of conversation from the locals gathered outside. They spoke in hushed tones, their words laced with fear and suspicion. I couldn't make out much, but phrases like outsider and stay away sent a chill down my spine. It was as if they were warning me to leave, to flee before it was too late. But I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more sinister at play. As I made my way out of town, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every shadow seemed to conceal unseen eyes, following my every move. I quickened my pace, eager to put distance between myself and the eerie town. But no matter how far I walked, the feeling of unease only grew stronger. It was as if the very land itself was warning me to turn back, to retreat from whatever darkness lurked ahead. But I pressed on, driven by a stubborn determination to uncover the truth. As night fell, I found myself deep in the heart of the countryside, surrounded by dense forests and looming mountains. The darkness was suffocating, swallowing me whole as I stumbled through the wilderness. Suddenly, I heard it, the sound of footsteps echoing through the night. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to listen, my senses on high alert. Someone or something was following me, lurking in the shadows just out of sight. I tried to shake off the feeling of dread that gripped me, but it clung to me like a second skin. With each step, the footsteps grew louder, closer, until I could almost feel the presence of whoever or whatever was stalking me. I knew I had to act fast if I wanted to escape whatever danger lurked in the darkness. Drawing upon every ounce of survival instinct I possessed, I veered off the trail and into the underbrush, hoping to lose my pursuer in the maze of trees. But whoever or whatever was following me was relentless. Their footsteps echoed through the forest, drawing closer with each passing moment. Panic surged through me as I realized I was running out of options, running out of time. I pushed myself to the limit, sprinting through the forest with reckless abandon. Branches slapped against my face, thorns tore at my clothes, but I didn't dare slow down. I had to keep moving, had to find a way to escape the nightmare closing in around me. Just when I thought I couldn't go on any longer, I stumbled upon a clearing in the forest. The moon cast its pale light upon the scene, illuminating the way ahead. With a burst of adrenaline-fueled energy, I raced towards the safety of the open space, praying for deliverance from the horrors that pursued me. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the chase was over. The footsteps faded into the distance, swallowed up by the darkness of the night. I collapsed onto the forest floor, gasping for breath, my heart pounding in my chest. As dawn broke on the horizon, I emerged from the forest, battered and bruised but alive. The small town lay behind me, a distant memory overshadowed by the terror of the night. I vowed never to return, never to set foot in that cursed place again. I've always loved spending time in nature, so when the weekend rolled around, I decided to head to a nearby state park for a camping trip. It was supposed to be a relaxing getaway, just me and the great outdoors. Little did I know, it would turn into a nightmare I couldn't escape. As I hiked along the trails, soaking in the sights and sounds of the forest, I stumbled upon a hidden clearing. At first, it seemed like any other part of the woods, but as I ventured closer, I noticed something unsettling. Strange symbols adorned the trees, etched into the bark with precision. They were unlike anything I'd ever seen before, ancient and otherworldly. My curiosity peaked, I stepped into the clearing, drawn to the mystery of it all. That's when I saw them, artifacts scattered across the forest floor, remnants of something long forgotten. There were strange trinkets, weathered and worn with age, and bizarre sculptures that seemed to defy explanation. 
Fear prickled at the back of my neck as I realized I wasn't alone. Someone or something had been here before me, leaving behind clues to a darkness I couldn't comprehend. A chill ran down my spine as I scanned the clearing, searching for any sign of danger. But the forest remained eerily silent, as if holding its breath, waiting for me to make a move. With a sense of unease gnawing in my gut, I made a hasty retreat, eager to put as much distance between myself and the clearing as possible. But no matter how fast I ran, the memory of those symbols lingered, haunting me with their enigmatic presence. Back at my campsite, I tried to shake off the feeling of dread that clung to me like a shadow. I built a fire, hoping its warm glow would chase away the darkness that threatened to consume me. But as the night wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every snap of a twig or rustle of leaves sent my heart racing, my senses on high alert. I tried to convince myself it was just my imagination, that there was nothing to be afraid of. But deep down, I knew better. There was something sinister lurking in the shadows, something ancient and malevolent. Unable to sleep, I sat by the fire, clutching my flashlight like a lifeline. I scanned the darkness, half expecting to see eyes gleaming back at me from the depths of the forest. Then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I heard it, a low, guttural growl emanating from the trees. My blood ran cold as I realized I was not alone. Panic set in as I scrambled to pack up my campsite, my hands shaking with fear. I knew I had to get out of there, to escape before whatever was out there found me. With trembling legs, I grabbed my backpack and fled into the night, guided only by the faint light of the moon. Branches clawed at my skin as I ran, each one a reminder of the danger that lurked in the darkness. I didn't stop until I reached the safety of my car, heart pounding in my chest, lungs burning with exertion. I drove away as fast as I could, leaving behind the state park and the horrors that lurked within its depths. As I glanced in the rearview mirror, I couldn't help but wonder what would have happened if I had stayed a moment longer. Would I have become just another victim of whatever lurked in those woods? I may never know the answer, but one thing's for sure, I'll never look at nature the same way again. After some online research, I stumbled upon a deserted campground that seemed perfect for my expedition. It was nestled deep in the wilderness, far from civilization, just the kind of place I was looking for. As I arrived at the campground, a sense of isolation washed over me. The eerie silence of the forest enveloped the area, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves or distant hoot of an owl. Ignoring the ominous feeling creeping up my spine, I set up my tent and prepared for the night ahead. As darkness descended, I lit a small campfire and sat alone, surrounded by shadows. But as I gazed into the flickering flames, a chill ran down my spine. Something didn't feel right about this place, as if it held a dark secret hidden in its depths. I tried to shake off my unease, convincing myself it was just my imagination running wild. But then I remembered the stories I had read online about this campground. Stories of disappearances, of hikers vanishing without a trace, never to be seen again. I scoffed at the notion, dismissing it as urban legend. After all, I was a seasoned adventurer, not some naive city dweller afraid of his own shadow. But deep down, a nagging voice whispered in the back of my mind, urging me to be cautious. As the night wore on, the forest seemed to come alive with unseen terrors. Every snap of a twig, every rustle of leaves, sent shivers down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes were following my every move. Suddenly, a sound pierced the silence, a low, guttural growl that echoed through the trees. My blood ran cold as I listened, trying to discern its source. But it seemed to come from all around me, surrounding me in a web of fear. With trembling hands, I reached for my flashlight, casting its beam into the darkness. But all I saw was the dense wall of trees, 
their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. I knew then that I was not alone in this desolate place. Fear gripped me in its icy grasp as I realized the danger I was in. Whatever lurked in the shadows, it was not something to be trifled with. With a sinking heart, I realized that I may have stumbled upon something far more sinister than I had bargained for. But I refused to let fear paralyze me. Clutching my flashlight tightly, I resolved to make it through the night, no matter what horrors awaited me. With each passing hour, the darkness seemed to deepen, pressing in on me from all sides. Then, just as I thought I couldn't take it any longer, I heard it, a soft whisper on the wind, barely audible above the sound of my own heartbeat. I strained to listen, trying to make out what it was saying. But the words were lost to me, carried away on the night breeze. Panic surged through me as I realized that I was not imagining things. There was someone out there, watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I knew then that I had to get out of there, before it was too late. With adrenaline coursing through my veins, I tore down my tent and fled into the darkness, guided only by the feeble beam of my flashlight. Branches clawed at my skin, roots snaked out to trip me, but I pressed on, driven by fear and desperation. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I burst into the clearing where I had parked my car. Relief flooded through me as I fumbled for my keys, my fingers shaking with adrenaline. But as I turned to leave, I felt a presence behind me, a shadow looming in the darkness. I whirled around, my heart pounding in my chest, but there was nothing there. Just the empty expanse of the forest, stretching out into the night. With a shudder, I climbed into my car and peeled out of the campground, leaving behind the horrors that lurked in its depths. As I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had narrowly escaped something far worse than death. Whatever had been stalking me in the darkness, it was something beyond my comprehension, something ancient and malevolent. It was just me, the trees, and the challenge of living off the grid. As an experienced survivalist, I relished the opportunity to push myself to the limit and prove that I could thrive in even the harshest conditions. I ventured deep into the wilderness, far from any sign of civilization. The dense foliage enveloped me, blocking out the sun and casting the forest floor into shadow. But I welcomed the solitude, embracing the silence of the wilderness as I set up my camp. Days turned into nights, and I reveled in the simplicity of my surroundings. I hunted for food, gathered firewood, and purified water from nearby streams. Each task tested my skills and pushed me to adapt to the challenges of life in the wild. But then, one day, as I was exploring the area around my camp, I stumbled upon something unexpected. Hidden among the trees was a makeshift shelter, constructed from branches and leaves. It was crude but functional, a testament to someone else's survival skills. At first, I was intrigued. Who else could be living out here in the wilderness? Were they a fellow survivalist like me, or something more sinister? My curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to investigate further. As I approached the shelter, a sense of unease washed over me. There was something off about the place, something that sent a chill down my spine. But I pushed aside my fear and pressed on, determined to uncover the truth. Inside the shelter, I found signs of recent occupation, a sleeping bag, a cooking pot, even a few canned goods. Whoever had been living here had left in a hurry, abandoning their makeshift home without a trace. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes were tracking my every move. I scanned the surrounding trees, searching for any sign of movement, but the forest remained still and silent. Suddenly, a twig snapped behind me, and I whirled around, heart pounding in my chest. But there was nothing there, just the empty expanse of the forest stretching out before me. I told myself it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, but deep down, I knew something was wrong. 
As night fell, I retreated to my own camp, but sleep eluded me. Every rustle of leaves, every distant howl of a wolf, sent me into a state of high alert. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was now alone in the wilderness, that someone, or something, was out there, watching and waiting. The next morning, I decided to pack up my camp and leave the area. Whatever secrets the wilderness held, I wanted no part in them. But as I made my way through the dense undergrowth, a sense of dread settled over me. I felt as though I was being followed, pursued by an unseen presence that lurked just beyond the edge of my vision. I quickened my pace, desperate to escape the oppressive atmosphere of the forest. But no matter how fast I ran, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was closing in on me. It was as if the very air around me was thick with malevolence, suffocating me with its intensity. Just when I thought I couldn't go on any longer, I stumbled upon a clearing in the forest. Relief flooded through me as I realized I had made it out alive. But as I glanced back at the trees, I saw movement among the shadows, a fleeting glimpse of something dark and sinister. With a final burst of energy, I pushed forward, putting as much distance between myself and the wilderness as possible. As I emerged from the trees, blinking in the harsh light of day, I vowed never to return to that cursed place again. For in its depths lay secrets better left undisturbed, and horrors beyond imagining. And I knew that if I ever ventured back into the wilderness, I might not be so lucky next time. I planned my mountain climbing trip meticulously, eager to conquer the challenges that awaited me. As an experienced climber, I relished the thought of testing my skills against the unforgiving terrain of the treacherous peak I had chosen. With my gear packed and determination fueling my spirit, I set out on the journey. The ascent was grueling, each step a battle against the elements. But I pressed on, driven by the thrill of the climb and the promise of adventure that lay ahead. As I reached higher altitudes, the air grew thinner, and the wind whipped against my face with increasing intensity. Finally, after hours of relentless climbing, I reached the summit. The view that greeted me was breathtaking, a vast expanse of snow-covered peaks stretching out to the horizon. But my triumph was short-lived as dark clouds began to gather on the horizon, signaling an approaching storm. With little time to spare, I quickly set up my base camp, anchoring my tent securely to the icy ground. As the first flakes of snow began to fall, I huddled inside, hoping to wait out the storm in safety. But the weather worsened with each passing hour, the wind howling like a banshee and the snowfall growing heavier by the minute. As the storm raged on outside, I listened anxiously for any signs of danger. But all I could hear was the sound of the wind battering against the tent, threatening to tear it from its moorings. I tried to push aside my growing unease, telling myself that I was safe inside my makeshift shelter. But then, I heard it, a low, guttural growl echoing through the darkness. My blood ran cold as I realized that I was now alone on the mountain. Whatever was out there, it was dangerous, and it was hunting me. With trembling hands, I reached for my climbing axe, the only weapon I had to defend myself. I strained my ears, trying to locate the source of the sound. But the howling wind masked any clues, leaving me to wonder if I had imagined the whole thing. But then, I saw it, a shadowy figure moving through the snow, its form barely visible in the whiteout conditions. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched, paralyzed with fear. I knew then that I had to act fast if I wanted to survive. Summoning all of my courage, I unzipped the tent flap and stepped out into the storm. The wind tore at my clothes, threatening to send me tumbling over the edge of the precipice. But I pressed on, determined to confront whatever lurked in the darkness. With each step, the figure grew closer, its movements swift and predatory. I gripped my axe tightly, ready to defend myself against whatever came my way. But as the figure drew near, I realized with a shock that it was not a human at all. It was something far worse, 
a creature of the snow and ice, its eyes gleaming with malice. I knew then that I was no match for it, that my only chance of survival lay in escaping down the mountain to safety. With a primal scream, I turned and fled, my heart pounding in my chest as I raced through the blinding snow. Behind me, I could hear the creature's footsteps, growing louder with each passing moment. But I refused to give up, pushing myself to the limits of my endurance in a desperate bid to escape. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I reached the base of the mountain, my lungs burning with exertion. I collapsed onto the snow-covered ground, gasping for breath but I knew that I couldn't rest for long. The creature was still out there, waiting for me to let down my guard. Summoning the last of my strength, I forced myself to my feet and stumbled towards safety. With each step, I could feel the creature's presence looming behind me, its icy breath hot on my neck. But I refused to look back, focusing instead on the distant lights of civilization that beckoned me home. At last, I reached the safety of the nearest town, my body battered and bruised but alive. As I collapsed onto the ground, I knew that I had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. I love spending time in the gray outdoors, so I decided to head to a nearby national forest for a weekend of hiking and fishing. It's always been my escape from the stresses of everyday life, a chance to reconnect with nature and recharge my batteries. I set up my campsite in a secluded spot near a picturesque stream, eager to start my adventure. The first day went by without a hitch. I explored the forest trails, casting my line into the clear waters in search of the perfect catch. As the sun dipped below the horizon, I returned to my campsite, feeling satisfied and content. But when I woke up the next morning, things took a turn for the worse. My food stash had been raided, the wrappers and containers strewn across the forest floor. Panic gripped me as I realized that I was not alone in the wilderness. I searched the area frantically, hoping to catch a glimpse of whoever had invaded my campsite. But all I found were a set of footprints leading away from my tent, disappearing into the dense undergrowth. Fear not in my insides as I considered the implications. Whoever had been in my campsite was still out there, lurking in the shadows, watching my every move. I knew then that I had to get out of there as soon as possible. With trembling hands, I packed up my gear and prepared to leave casting nervous glances over my shoulder as I worked. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sent my heart racing with fear. Finally, everything was packed, and I hoisted my backpack onto my shoulders, ready to make a break for it. But as I turned to leave, a voice echoed through the forest, chilling me to the bone. Leaving so soon? I froze in place my blood turning to ice as I realized that the voice was coming from behind me. Slowly, I turned around, my heart pounding in my chest. Standing before me was a man, his features obscured by the shadows. He smiled at me, a cold, calculating smile that sent shivers down my spine. Did you enjoy your stay? He asked, his voice dripping with malice. I tried to speak, to demand answers, but my throat was dry my words caught in a knot of fear. Who was this man? What did he want from me? But before I could gather my wits, he lunged forward, his hands reaching out to grab me. With a cry of terror, I stumbled backward, tripping over a root and falling to the ground. Pain exploded through my body as I hit the forest floor, but I forced myself to my feet, adrenaline coursing through my veins. I had to get out of there, no matter the cost. Ignoring the pain, I ran as fast as my legs would carry me, crashing through the underbrush in a desperate bid for freedom. Behind me, I could hear the man's footsteps, growing louder with each passing moment. But I refused to give up, pushing myself to the limits of my endurance as I fled deeper into the forest. I had to find help, to escape this nightmare before it was too late. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, 
I burst into a clearing, relief flooding through me as I saw the familiar sight of my car parked nearby. With a burst of energy, I sprinted towards it, throwing open the door and diving inside. I peeled out of the forest, leaving the nightmare behind me. I love exploring the wilderness, so I decided to venture deep into the forest for an adventure. It was a beautiful day, the sun filtering through the canopy of trees, casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. I set out with my backpack and hiking boots, eager to see what secrets the forest held. As I wandered deeper into the woods, I stumbled upon a series of abandoned structures hidden among the trees. They looked old and weathered, their wooden beams sagging with age. Curiosity peaked, I approached cautiously, wondering what could have once occupied these deserted buildings. The first structure I came across was a small cabin, its windows shattered and its door hanging off its hinges. Inside, the air was thick with dust, and the floorboards creaked beneath my feet. It was clear that no one had lived here in years. Moving on, I discovered a dilapidated barn nearby, its roof caved in and its walls covered in graffiti. I shivered as I stepped inside, the musty smell of decay assaulting my senses. It was like stepping back in time, to a place long forgotten by the world. But as I explored further, I began to notice something strange about the buildings. There were markings etched into the walls, symbols that seemed to pulsate with an otherworldly energy. It sent a chill down my spine, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Ignoring my unease, I pressed on, determined to uncover the truth behind these mysterious structures. But the deeper I delved, the more disturbing things became. I found remnants of what looked like ritualistic ceremonies, candles melted into puddles of wax and strange symbols drawn in blood. My heart raced as I realized the gravity of what I had stumbled upon. This wasn't just some abandoned campsite, it was evidence of a sinister cult that had once called the woods home. I knew then that I had to get out of there and report my findings to the authorities. But as I turned to leave, a figure emerged from the shadows, blocking my path. It was a man, his face obscured by a hooded cloak, his eyes gleaming with malice. My blood ran cold as I realized that I was face to face with a member of the cult. Without a word, he lunged at me, his hands outstretched like claws. I screamed and stumbled backward, tripping over a fallen log and landing hard on the ground. Pain shot through my body, but I forced myself to my feet, scrambling to escape. But the man was relentless, pursuing me through the forest with single-minded determination. I could hear his footsteps echoing behind me, growing closer with each passing moment. Panic surged through me as I realized that I was running out of options. With a burst of adrenaline, I pushed myself to run faster, my lungs burning with exertion. I could see the edge of the forest up ahead, the promise of safety beckoning me forward. But just as I reached it, a hand closed around my ankle, sending me crashing to the ground once more. I cried out in terror as the man dragged me back into the depths of the forest, his grip like iron. I struggled and fought with all my strength, but it was no use. I was at his mercy, trapped in his clutches with no way out. But just as I thought all hope was lost, a miracle occurred. A group of hikers stumbled upon the scene, drawn by the sound of my screams. With their help, I was able to break free from the man's grasp and escape into the safety of their midst. Together, we made our way out of the forest and back to civilization or I wasted no time in reporting what had happened to the police. They launched an investigation into the cult, uncovering evidence of their nefarious activities and putting an end to their reign of terror once and for all. As for me, I will never forget the horrors I witnessed in those woods, the chilling realization that evil can lurk in even the most remote corners of the earth.
As a camp counselor, I took my responsibility seriously. Leading a group of teenagers on a camping trip was both rewarding and challenging. We chose a remote area for our adventure, far from the distractions of civilization. The air was crisp, the sky clear, and the forest seemed to stretch on endlessly. The first day of the trip went smoothly. We set up our tents, gathered firewood, and cooked dinner over an open flame. The teenagers were excited, eager to explore the wilderness and make memories that would last a lifetime. But as night fell, things took a sinister turn. One of the campers, a quiet girl named Emily, failed to return to her tent after a late night bathroom break. Panic set in as we searched frantically for her, calling out her name into the darkness. But there was no sign of Emily, no trace of where she might have gone. It was as if she had vanished into thin air. Fear crept us as we realized that we were alone in the wilderness, with no way of knowing what had become of our missing camper. I knew that I had to act fast if we were going to find Emily before it was too late. Gathering the rest of the group, I organized a search party, dividing the forest into sections and assigning each group a designated area to search. We combed through the underbrush, calling out Emily's name and shining our flashlights into the shadows. But the forest seemed to swallow us whole, its dense canopy blocking out the moonlight and casting eerie shadows on the forest floor. Hours passed with no sign of Emily, and desperation began to set in. I could see the fear in the eyes of the teenagers, the uncertainty of what lay ahead. But I refused to give up hope, determined to find Emily and bring her back to safety. Then, just as I was beginning to lose hope, we stumbled upon a clue. A torn scrap of fabric caught on a branch, its vibrant colors standing out against the muted tones of the forest. It was Emily's shirt, torn and blood-stained. Panic surged through me as I realized the gravity of the situation. Emily was in danger, and we were running out of time to save her. With renewed determination, we pressed on, following the trail of clues deeper into the forest. But as we ventured further from our campsite, the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. I could sense that we were being watched, that unseen eyes were following our every move. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end as I scanned the trees for any sign of danger. Suddenly, a twig snapped somewhere off in the distance, breaking the silence of the night. My heart raced as I realized that we were not alone in the forest. Whatever had taken Emily was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I urged the group to move faster to stay together and keep an eye out for any sign of danger. But it was too late. Before we knew it, we were surrounded by a group of masked figures, their eyes gleaming with malice. Panic swept through the group as the figures closed in on us, their movements swift and coordinated. I could hear the teenagers screaming, their cries echoing through the forest as they tried to break free from the clutches of our attackers. But there was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. We were trapped, at the mercy of our captors, with no hope of escape. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest as I braced myself for whatever horrors awaited us. Then, just when all seemed lost, a voice cut through the chaos, breaking through the darkness like a beacon of hope. It was Emily, alive and unharmed, standing before us with tears streaming down her face. Relief washed over me as I realized that we had found her, that she was safe and sound. But our joy was short-lived as the masked figures closed in on us, their intentions clear. With no other choice, I grabbed Emily's hand and led the group in a desperate sprint through the forest, our pursuers hot on our heels. We ran faster than we ever thought possible, fueled by fear and adrenaline, until at last, we emerged from the forest and into the safety of the open meadow. I'm used to responding to distress calls in remote areas. So when the call came in about a group of campers in trouble, I didn't hesitate to respond. The coordinates led me deep into the wilderness, 
far from any civilization. As I approached the designated campsite, a sense of unease settled over me. The forest was eerily quiet, devoid of the usual sounds of wildlife. I parked my vehicle and stepped out, scanning the area for any signs of life. What I found sent chills down my spine. The campsite was deserted, tents ripped open and belongings scattered across the forest floor. It looked like a scene out of a horror movie, with no trace of the campers in sight. I quickly assessed the situation, searching for clues as to what had happened. There were signs of a struggle everywhere I looked, bloodstains on the ground and broken branches littering the area. I called out for the campers, but my voice echoed back to me, unanswered. Fear not in my insights as I realized that something terrible must have happened here. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I followed a trail of blood deeper into the forest. It led me to a clearing, where I found something that made my blood run cold. There, hanging from a tree, was a backpack. It was torn and blood-stained, its contents spilling out onto the ground below. It was a grim reminder of the fate that had befallen the campers. I continued to search the area, my heart pounding in my chest with each step. But the deeper I delved into the forest, the more I felt like I was being watched. It was as if unseen eyes were tracking my every move, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Suddenly, a twig snapped behind me, and I spun around, my hand instinctively reaching for the knife at my belt. But there was nothing there just the empty expanse of the forest stretching out before me. I shook off the feeling of unease and pressed on, determined to find out what had happened to the campers. But the further I went, the more the forest seemed to close in around me, as if trying to swallow me whole. I stumbled upon another clue, a torn piece of fabric caught on a branch. It was stained with blood, evidence of the violence that had taken place here. My stomach churned as I realized that I was dealing with something far more sinister than I had anticipated. As I followed the trail of blood deeper into the forest, I began to hear strange noises all around me. It sounded like whispers, faint and barely audible above the rustle of leaves and the distant cry of a bird. My heart raced as I realized that I was now alone in the forest. Whatever had attacked the campers was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for its next victim. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I realized that I had to get out of there before it was too late. But as I turned to leave, I heard a voice calling out to me from the darkness. Help me, it whispered, sending shivers down my spine. I hesitated, unsure of what to do. But then, against my better judgment, I followed the voice deeper into the forest, my heart pounding in my chest with each step. What I found there will haunt me for the rest of my days. It was a campsite, much like the one I had found before, but this one was different. This one was occupied. There, in the center of the clearing, stood a figure, cloaked in darkness. It was hunched over something, its back turned to me as it worked. I called out to it, but it didn't respond, its only reaction a low, guttural crawl that sent chills down my spine. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I realized that I was face to face with the thing that had attacked the campers. It was a monster, a twisted, grotesque creature straight out of a nightmare. I knew then that I had to get out of there, to escape before it was too late. But as I turned to leave, the creature turned its head and fixed me with its gaze. It was then that I realized the true horror of what I was facing. Its eyes were empty, devoid of any humanity. They were the eyes of a predator, cold and calculating, filled with an insatiable hunger. And as it lunged towards me, I knew that I was its next meal. With a scream of terror, I turned and ran, my feet pounding against the forest floor as I fled for my life. Behind me, I could hear the creature's footsteps, growing louder with each passing moment. But I refused to give up, pushing myself to run faster to escape the nightmare that pursued me through the darkness. And when I finally emerged from the forest, battered and bruised but alive, I knew that I had narrowly escaped something terrible.
The sun was just beginning to rise as I set out, the cool morning air invigorating as I pedaled through the dense forest. As I rode deeper into the woods, the canopy of trees overhead grew thicker, casting long shadows across the trail. But I wasn't worried. I knew these trails like the back of my hand, or so I thought. Suddenly, I took a wrong turn, veering off the main path onto a smaller, less traveled trail. At first, I didn't realize my mistake, but as the trail grew narrower and more overgrown, a sense of unease began to creep over me. I tried to turn back, but the way was blocked by fallen trees and tangled undergrowth. Panic started to set in as I realized that I was lost, alone in the depths of the forest with no idea how to find my way out. I pushed on, hoping to stumble upon a familiar landmark or signpost that would lead me back to safety. But the further I rode, the more disoriented I became, the dense foliage obscuring my view and the silence of the forest pressing in on me from all sides. Then, I heard it, the sound of footsteps crunching through the underbrush behind me. My heart skipped a beat as I glanced over my shoulder, but there was no one there. I told myself it was just my imagination, that I was letting my fear get the best of me. But the footsteps continued, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. I pedaled faster, desperate to put some distance between myself and whatever was following me. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw it, a shadowy figure darting between the trees, its movements swift and furtive. Fear clenched my chest as I realized that I was being pursued by something, something that didn't want me in its territory. I tried to outpace it, to lose it in the maze of trees and underbrush. But no matter how fast I rode, it was always there, lurking just out of sight, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the forest floor, I knew that I had to get out of there, to find my way back to civilization before it was too late. But every path I tried seemed to lead me deeper into the wilderness, further away from safety. Then, just when I thought all hope was lost, I stumbled upon a clearing in the forest, a small patch of open ground bathed in moonlight. It was my chance to escape my chance to get out of this nightmare once and for all. I rode for all I was worth, the adrenaline coursing through my veins as I raced towards the clearing. Behind me, I could hear the footsteps growing louder, closer with each passing moment. But I refused to look back, focusing instead on the glimmer of moonlight ahead. Finally, I burst into the clearing, my heart pounding in my chest as I skidded to a stop. I glanced over my shoulder, expecting to see my pursuer hot on my heels. But there was nothing there, just the empty expanse of the forest stretching out behind me. With a sigh of relief, I collapsed onto the ground, exhaustion washing over me in waves. I had made it out alive, escaped from whatever lurked in the depths of the woods. I'm a survival instructor, and teaching people how to survive in the wilderness is my passion. So when a group of students signed up for my wilderness survival course, I was excited to share my knowledge with them. We headed deep into the forest, far from civilization, to test our skills in a real-world setting. The first few days of the course went smoothly. We learned how to build shelters, start fires, and find food and water in the wild. But as we ventured deeper into the forest, things took a dark turn. One day, while exploring the area, we stumbled upon a hidden cave tucked away among the trees. Curiosity peaked, we approached cautiously, unsure of what we might find inside. As we entered the cave, a chill ran down my spine. The air was thick with the smell of decay, and the ground was littered with bones. Human bones. Fear gripped me as I realized that we were not alone in the forest. Someone or something had been living here, preying on unsuspecting travelers who had ventured too close. I quickly gathered my students and urged them to leave the cave, but it was too late. We heard the sound of footsteps echoing from the depths of the cave, growing louder with each passing moment. 
Panic set in as we realized that we were trapped, with no way out and no means of defending ourselves. We huddled together, praying that whatever was stalking us would pass us by unnoticed. But luck was not on our side. With a guttural growl, a figure emerged from the darkness, its eyes gleaming with malice. It was a man, wild and feral looking, with a look of hunger in his eyes. I knew then that we were in grave danger. Without a word, I signaled to my students to run, to get out of there as fast as they could. And with a cry of terror, we fled into the forest, our hearts pounding in our chests with fear. Behind us, I could hear the man's footsteps, growing louder and more frenzied with each passing moment. He was gaining on us, his presence like a shadow looming over us, ready to strike at any moment. But we refused to give up. We pushed ourselves to run faster, to escape the nightmare that pursued us through the forest. And when we finally emerged from the trees, battered and bruised but alive, we knew that we had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. As we stumbled back to civilization, we vowed never to return to that cursed place again. For in its depths lay horrors beyond imagining, waiting to ensnare anyone foolish enough to venture into its embrace. When I decided to embark on a solo trek through remote wilderness, I was filled with excitement and anticipation. Little did I know that my adventure would soon turn into a fight for survival. As I hiked deeper into the wilderness, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The trees towered above me, their leaves rustling in the gentle breeze, and the air was filled with the sweet scent of pine. But my peaceful solitude was short-lived. As I rounded a bend in the trail, I stumbled upon a group of men, their faces hidden beneath dark hoods. They looked dangerous, their eyes filled with malice. Fear gripped me as I realized that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than I had anticipated. These men were criminals, hiding out in the woods, and I had stumbled upon their hideout. I knew then that I had to get out of there, to escape before they spotted me and decided to do me harm. But as I turned to leave, I felt a hand clap down on my shoulder, holding me in place. With a cry of terror, I tried to break free, but the man's grip was like iron. He dragged me back towards the group, his eyes gleaming with malice. I struggled and fought with all my strength, but it was no use. I was at their mercy, trapped in their clutches with no way out. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I realized that I had to think fast if I wanted to survive. I scanned the area for any signs of escape, but the forest stretched out around me, dark and forbidding. But then, an idea struck me. I remembered a small trail that branched off from the main path, leading deeper into the forest. It was a long shot, but it was my only chance. With a burst of adrenaline, I broke free from the man's grip and bolted towards the trail my heart pounding in my chest with fear. Behind me, I could hear the men shouting and cursing, their footsteps echoing through the trees as they pursued me. But I refused to give up. I pushed myself to run faster, to escape the nightmare that pursued me through the forest. And when I finally emerged from the trees and knew it was over, although it lives in head, even now, years later, I'm an outdoor enthusiast, and I love nothing more than spending time in nature with my friends. So when we decided to go camping in a remote forest, I was thrilled. We packed our gear and set out for the wilderness, eager for an adventure. The first few days of our camping trip were idyllic. We hiked through the forest, swam in the rivers, and roasted marshmallows over the campfire. But then, on the third day, disaster struck. As we sat around the fire, enjoying the warmth of the flames, we noticed a strange smell in the air. It was acrid and smoky, like burning wood. We looked around, confused, and that's when we saw it. 
A plume of smoke was rising up from the trees in the distance, thick and black against the blue sky. Panic surged through me as I realized what was happening. A forest fire. We scrambled to gather our belongings and make a plan. But as we tried to flee, we realized that the fire had surrounded us, cutting off our escape route. With no other option, we plunged into the burning landscape, the heat searing our skin and the smoke stinging our eyes. I could feel the flames licking at my heels as I ran, pushing myself to keep going despite the pain. But as we fled, we realized that we were now alone. Something was stalking us through the smoke and flames, something dark and sinister. I caught glimpses of figures moving in the shadows, their eyes glowing with malice. They seemed to be toying with us, hurting us deeper into the inferno with each passing moment. Fear gripped me as I realized that we were being pursued by an unknown threat, something far more dangerous than the fire itself. But I refused to give up. I pushed myself to run faster, to outpace whatever was chasing us. As we ran, we stumbled upon a clearing in the forest, a small patch of untouched land surrounded by flames. It was our only chance to catch our breath and regroup. But as we huddled together, catching our breath, we heard it. A low, guttural growl echoing through the trees. Whatever was chasing us had found us. With a sense of dread, we realized that we were trapped, with nowhere to run and no means of defending ourselves. We were at the mercy of whatever lurked in the darkness. But then, just when all hope seemed lost, we heard the sound of helicopters overhead. Search and rescue teams had come to our aid, their bright lights cutting through the smoke and flames. With a sense of relief, we followed the sound of their voices, emerging from the forest battered and bruised but alive. We had survived the fire, and whatever had been chasing us through the night. I'm an avid hiker, always seeking new trails and adventures in the gray outdoors. So when my friends and I stumbled upon an abandoned mine hidden deep in the forest, we were intrigued. The entrance was overgrown with vines and moss, hinting at years of neglect. Despite the warning signs, we couldn't resist the urge to explore. With our flashlights in hand, we descended into the darkness, the air growing colder and heavier with each step. As we delved deeper into the mine, a sense of unease settled over us. The walls were damp and slick with moisture, and the air was thick with the smell of decay. We stumbled upon old mining equipment scattered throughout the tunnels, rusted and broken from years of disuse. It was clear that this mine had been abandoned long ago, its secrets buried deep within its dark depths. But as we explored further, we began to uncover evidence of a horrific tragedy that had occurred there years ago. We found old newspaper clippings and photographs, detailing the story of a mining accident that had claimed the lives of dozens of workers. The more we learned, the more our sense of dread grew. It seemed that the mine was cursed, haunted by the ghosts of those who had lost their lives within its walls. As we pressed on, determined to uncover the truth, we heard strange noises echoing through the tunnels. It sounded like whispers, faint and barely audible above the sound of our footsteps. Fear gripped us as we realized that we were not alone in the mine. Something was watching us from the shadows, its presence lurking just out of sight. With a sense of urgency, we tried to find our way out of the mine, but the tunnel seemed to twist and turn endlessly, leading us further into the darkness. Suddenly, without warning, the mine began to shake violently, the ground trembling beneath our feet. Panic surged through us as we realized that the mine was collapsing around us. With no time to spare, we ran as fast as we could, dodging falling rocks and debris as we scrambled towards the entrance. It was a race against time, with death hot on our heels. But just when it seemed like all hope was lost, we stumbled upon a narrow shaft leading to the surface. With a final burst of energy, we climbed towards the light, emerging from the mine leaving the horror behind us.
We were excited to celebrate my friend's birthday with a camping trip in the remote forest. We packed our tents, sleeping bags, and enough food to last us a few days. The plan was to hike, fish, and enjoy the tranquility of nature far away from the hustle and bustle of the city. As we set up camp near a serene lake, we felt a sense of freedom and adventure wash over us. The crackling of the campfire, the rustling of leaves, and the chirping of crickets provided the perfect soundtrack to our night under the stars. But our peaceful getaway took a terrifying turn when we stumbled upon a group of poachers in the forest. At first, we thought they were just fellow campers, but as we got closer, we realized they were armed with guns and traps. Fear gripped us as we watched them set up snares and lay out bait to catch endangered wildlife. We knew we had to do something to stop them, but we were outnumbered and outgunned. Whispers of a plan circulated among us as we huddled together, trying to come up with a strategy. We knew we had to act fast before the poachers spotted us and turned their weapons on us. With hearts pounding, we made our move, sneaking up on the poachers under the cover of darkness. Adrenaline coursed through our veins as we confronted them, demanding they leave the animals alone and leave the forest. Tensions escalated as the poachers refused to back down, their hostility evident in their words and gestures. It was clear they weren't going to leave without a fight. In the blink of an eye, chaos erupted as the poachers opened fire, bullets whizzing past us as we scrambled for cover. Panic set in as we realized the gravity of the situation, our lives hanging in the balance. But we refused to go down without a fight. With determination fueling our actions, we fought back, using whatever makeshift weapons we could find to defend ourselves and the animals. The forest echoed with the sounds of gunfire and shouts as the battle raged on, the darkness amplifying the sense of danger and uncertainty. Each moment felt like an eternity as we fought tooth and nail for survival. Despite the odds stacked against us, we refused to give up, drawing strength from each other as we pushed forward driven by a shared sense of purpose and camaraderie. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the poachers retreated, their ranks thinned by our relentless defense. We watched as they disappeared into the night, leaving behind the chaos and destruction they had wrought. Exhausted but victorious, we took stock of the aftermath, tending to our wounds and comforting each other in the aftermath of the harrowing ordeal. Despite the danger we faced, we emerged stronger and more united than ever before. As dawn broke, casting a warm glow over the forest, we packed up our camp and made our way back to civilization, our hearts heavy with the weight of what we had witnessed but hopeful for a future where nature and its inhabitants could thrive in peace. I'm an outdoor photographer, always seeking out remote and untouched landscapes to capture the beauty of nature through my lens. It's my passion, my escape from the noise and chaos of the city. So, when I found a secluded spot deep in the wilderness, I knew it was the perfect location for my next shoot. I set up camp near a tranquil lake, surrounded by towering trees and rugged mountains. The scenery was breathtaking, exactly what I was looking for. As I unpacked my gear and prepared to capture the golden hour light, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Brushing off the unease, I focused on my photography, losing myself in the beauty of the natural world. But as I reviewed the photos later that night, my blood ran cold. In the background of every shot, there were strange, shadowy figures lurking among the trees. I tried to rationalize it telling myself it was just a trick of the light or a figment of my imagination. But the more I studied the photos, the more convinced I became that there was something sinister going on. Fear gnawed at the edges of my mind as I realized I was now alone out here in the wilderness. Someone or something was watching me, stalking me from the shadows. With trembling hands, I packed up my gear and hastily dismantled my camp the sense of urgency driving me to leave the area as quickly as possible. Every rustle of leaves and snap of twigs sent a shiver down my spine, and I couldn't shake the feeling of being followed. 
As I made my way back to civilization, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that hung over me like a dark cloud. The memory of those strange figures lurking in the background haunted me, their presence a chilling reminder of the dangers lurking in the wilderness. I couldn't bring myself to look at the photos again, the fear of what I might see too great to bear. But even as I tried to put the experience behind me, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had stumbled upon something beyond my understanding, something that defied logic and reason. It was a relief to finally reach the safety of civilization, but the experience had left its mark on me, a lingering sense of unease that refused to be shaken. I knew I had to put some distance between myself and that remote wilderness to escape the shadows that had followed me home. As I reflected on the experience, I couldn't help but wonder what those figures were, why they had been watching me, and what they wanted. But some questions are better left unanswered, and I was content to leave the chapter of my life behind me. But deep down, I knew that no matter where I went or how far I ran, the memory of those strange figures would always haunt me, a chilling reminder of the thin veil between the known and the unknown, the seen and the unseen. We were a group of friends, seeking adventure and escape from the monotony of our daily lives. So, when we decided to go camping in a remote mountain range, we were excited for the challenge and the chance to immerse ourselves in nature. As we set out on our journey, the weather was clear, the skies were blue, and the air was crisp and invigorating. We hiked through dense forests and across rugged terrain, eager to reach our secluded campsite nestled among the peaks. But as evening fell and the sun dipped below the horizon, the temperature began to drop, and the wind picked up, a harbinger of the storm to come. We hurriedly pitched our tent and gathered firewood, hoping to stave off the cold as long as possible. As darkness descended and the first flurries of snow began to fall, we huddled together inside our flimsy shelter, the howling wind and biting cold seeping through the thin fabric. We tried to stay warm by huddling together and sharing body heat, but it was a losing battle against the relentless onslaught of the storm. Outside, the wind roared like a beast, whipping snow and ice against the sides of our tent with ferocious intensity. Inside, we shivered and huddled together for warmth, our breath forming clouds in the frigid air. As the hours stretched on and the storm raged outside, we huddled together in terrified silence, each of us grappling with our own fears and doubts. Would we make it through the night? Would help come in time? Or were we doomed to freeze to death in the unforgiving wilderness? But despite the fear and uncertainty, we refused to give up hope. We knew that if we stayed calm and worked together, we stood a chance of surviving until help arrived. Hours passed like an eternity, each moment feeling like an eternity as we waited out the storm in tense silence. But as dawn broke and the first light of morning filtered through the clouds, we knew that we had made it through the worst of it. Relief washed over us like a wave as we emerged from our shelter and surveyed the aftermath of the storm. The landscape was blanketed in a thick layer of snow, the trees bowed under its weight, but we were alive, and that was all that mattered. As we packed up our camp and prepared to make the journey back to civilization, we knew that we had faced the ultimate test of survival and emerged victorious. The experience had brought us closer together, forged bonds that would last a lifetime, and reminded us of the fragility of life in the face of nature's wrath. We decided to go camping in a remote forest, we were excited for the chance to immerse ourselves in nature and create memories that would last a lifetime. As we trekked deeper into the woods, the trees grew thicker, and the air grew still, casting an eerie silence over the forest. But we pressed on, eager to find the perfect spot to set up camp and begin our adventure. But as we pitched our tents and gathered firewood, we failed to notice the signs warning us that we were trespassing on private land. It wasn't until we were approached by a group of angry locals that we realized our mistake. At first, 
we tried to reason with them, explaining that we had no intention of causing any harm and offering to leave immediately. But our pleas fell on deaf ears, and the locals grew increasingly hostile, their anger boiling over into threats of violence. Terrified, we scrambled to pack up our camp and make a hasty retreat, but it was too late. The locals had already descended upon us, their faces contorted with rage as they chased us through the forest, their shouts echoing through the trees like a death knell. As we ran, our hearts pounding in our chests, we could hear the sounds of pursuit growing closer and closer, the branches snapping underfoot and the leaves rustling as our pursuers closed in on us. We ran until our lungs burned and our legs felt like lead, but still, they pursued us, their relentless pursuit driving us deeper into the heart of the forest, where the trees grew thicker and the shadows deeper. At last, when we could run no more, we stumbled upon a clearing, the moonlight filtering through the trees and casting an ethereal glow over the scene. But our relief was short-lived, for we soon realized that we were trapped, surrounded on all sides by our vengeful pursuers. With nowhere left to run and our backs against the wall, we knew that we had only one choice, to fight for our lives. And so, we banded together, our hearts filled with fear and determination as we prepared to face our attackers head-on. The battle that ensued was brutal and bloody, a desperate struggle for survival as we fought tooth and nail against our assailants, our fists and weapons clashing in the moonlight as we fought for our very lives. But despite our best efforts, we were outnumbered and outmatched, our attackers relentless in their pursuit of vengeance. And in the chaos of battle, one of our own fell, injured and bleeding, a casualty of the brutal conflict. With our comrade injured and our forces dwindling, we knew that we had no choice but to retreat, to flee into the darkness and seek help before it was too late. And so, with heavy hearts and spirits broken, we turned and ran, leaving behind the scene of our bloody battle as we fought to escape with our lives. I was determined to put my survival skills to the test, to push myself to the limit and prove that I could thrive in even the harshest of environments. So, I packed up my gear and set out for a remote location, far from the comforts of civilization, where I could truly test my abilities. As I hiked deeper into the wilderness, the trees grew thicker and the air grew still, casting a sense of isolation over the landscape. But I pressed on, eager to find the perfect spot to set up camp and begin my adventure. But as I navigated the rugged terrain, disaster struck. I stumbled on a loose rock and tumbled to the ground, my ankle twisting painfully beneath me. I gritted my teeth against the pain, but I knew that I was in trouble. Without the use of my ankle, I would be unable to continue my journey or call for help. With no other option, I struggled to my feet and limped to a nearby clearing, where I set up my camp and tried to assess the extent of my injuries. But as I inspected my ankle, I realized with horror that it was swollen and bruised, making it impossible for me to walk. Alone and injured, I knew that I was in serious trouble. Without the ability to call for help, I would be at the mercy of the elements and whatever else lurked in the wilderness. As night fell, I huddled in my tent, the darkness closing in around me like a suffocating blanket. The sounds of the forest seemed to grow louder, more menacing, as if the creatures that called it home could sense my vulnerability. I tried to push aside my fear and focus on survival, but the pain in my ankle was overwhelming, a constant reminder of my precarious situation. I knew that I would have to rely on my wits and instincts if I had any hope of making it out of this alive. As the hours dragged on, the temperature plummeted, and I huddled closer to my meager fire, trying to ward off the biting cold. But despite my efforts, I could feel the chill seeping into my bones, sapping my strength and resolve. But just when I thought that things couldn't get any worse, I heard the sound of footsteps approaching my camp, slow and deliberate, as if whoever was out there was trying to sneak up on me. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to listen for any more sounds, but all I could hear was the eerie silence of the forest, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves in the wind. I knew that I had to act fast if I wanted to survive, 
so I grabbed a makeshift weapon and prepared to defend myself against whatever or whoever was lurking outside. But just as I braced myself for a confrontation, I heard a voice calling out to me, a voice filled with concern and compassion. It was a search and rescue team, sent out to find me after I failed to return from my trip on time. Relief flooded through me as I realized that help had finally arrived. With their assistance, I was able to receive medical attention for my injured ankle and make it back to safety, grateful to be alive and determined never to underestimate the wilderness again. We were excited for our camping trip, eager to escape the hustle and bustle of city life and immerse ourselves in the tranquility of nature. But as we ventured deeper into the remote forest, a sense of unease began to settle over us. The dense canopy overhead cast the forest floor in shadow, making it difficult to see more than a few feet ahead. The air was thick with the scent of pine and earth, and the only sounds were the rustle of leaves in the wind and the distant calls of birds. But as night fell and we settled into our campsite, our sense of peace was shattered by the chilling howls of wolves echoing through the trees. We knew that wolves inhabited these woods, but we never expected to encounter them so up close and personal. Fear gripped us as we realized that we were being stalked by a pack of predators, hungry and relentless in their pursuit. We huddled together, our hearts pounding in our chests as we listened to the wolves circling our camp, their eyes glowing in the darkness but we knew that we couldn't stay put and wait for the wolves to make their move. With adrenaline coursing through our veins, we sprang into action, grabbing whatever makeshift weapons we could find and preparing to defend ourselves against the relentless onslaught. As the wolves closed in, we fought with all our strength, swinging wildly at the snarling beasts as they lunged for us with bare teeth and razor-sharp claws. The air was filled with the sound of our shouts and the growls of the wolves, a chaotic symphony of fear and desperation. But despite our best efforts, the wolves seemed to be everywhere at once, their numbers overwhelming us as they continued to press the attack. We knew that we had to find a way out of this nightmare, to escape the forest and reach safety before it was too late. With no other option, we fled into the darkness, our hearts pounding in our chests as we raced through the trees, the wolves hot on our heels. We stumbled and fell, our bodies battered and bruised, but we refused to give up hope. Through sheer determination and grit, we managed to outpace the wolves and find our way back to civilization, bruised and bloody but alive. The memory of that harrowing night would haunt us for years to come, a reminder of the dangers that lurked in the wilderness and the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. We packed our bags and headed out to our remote forest, eager to leave our worries behind and immerse ourselves in the great outdoors. As we trekked deeper into the woods, the trees closed in around us, casting long shadows over the forest floor. The air was thick with the scent of pine needles and damp earth, and the only sound was the crunch of leaves beneath our feet. But as we ventured further into the wilderness, we stumbled upon something that sent a chill down our spines, a makeshift camp hidden among the trees, surrounded by thick undergrowth and camouflage from view. Curiosity peaked, we approached cautiously, unsure of what we might find. But as we drew closer, our worst fears were realized the camp was a front for an illegal marijuana operation, with rows of plants stretching out as far as the eye could see. We knew that we had stumbled upon something dangerous, something that could get us into serious trouble if we weren't careful. But before we could turn and flee, we heard the sound of voices approaching, low and menacing, as if whoever was out there meant business. With no other option, we dove into the underbrush, hiding ourselves as best we could and praying that we wouldn't be discovered. But as the voices drew closer, I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, my breath coming in short, ragged gasps. I wanted to run, to flee from this place and never look back. But I knew that if we were caught, we would be at the mercy of these ruthless criminals, with no one to turn to for help. As we crouched in the darkness, 
The minutes stretched out into hours, each moment feeling like an eternity as we waited for the danger to pass. But just as we were beginning to lose hope, we heard the sound of footsteps retreating into the distance, the voices fading away until there were nothing more than a distant echo. With trembling hands, we emerged from our hiding spot and made a run for it, pushing through the dense undergrowth and scrambling up steep embankments as we raced to put as much distance between ourselves and the illegal operation as possible. But even as we fled, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that someone or something was tracking our every move, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. We ran until our legs burned and our lungs ached, until we could no longer hear the sounds of pursuit behind us. And when we finally stopped to catch our breath, we collapsed to the ground, exhausted and shaken but alive. As we sat there in the darkness, surrounded by the sounds of the forest, we knew that we had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. But even as we breathed a sigh of relief, we couldn't shake the feeling that the danger was far from over, that the criminals who ran the illegal operation would stop at nothing to protect their secret. And so, with a newfound sense of urgency, we picked ourselves up and continued our journey through the wilderness, vowing to never speak of what we had seen until now. I love nothing more than exploring the great outdoors on my own. So when I decided to embark on a solo trek through the mountains in search of solitude, I was filled with excitement and anticipation. I packed my gear and set out for the wilderness, eager for the adventure that lay ahead. The first few days of my trek were peaceful and serene. I hiked through towering forests and along rugged mountain trails, reveling in the beauty of nature all around me. But then, on the third day of my journey, I stumbled upon something that would change everything. As I was hiking along a narrow trail, I noticed a small opening in the side of a cliff. Curiosity peaked, I decided to investigate further. I scrambled up the rocky slope and peered into the darkness of the cave. What I found inside took my breath away. The cave was filled with strange symbols etched into the walls, their meaning and origin unknown to me. They seemed ancient, as if they had been there for centuries, untouched by time. Fear prickled at the back of my neck as I realized that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than I had ever imagined. The air in the cave felt heavy and oppressive, as if weighed down by an unseen presence. I wanted to turn and run, to get as far away from the cave as possible, but something held me back. A voice in the back of my mind urged me to stay, to uncover the secrets that lay hidden within the darkness. With trembling hands, I reached out and traced the outline of one of the symbols on the wall. As I did, a chill ran down my spine, and I felt a sense of unease wash over me. Suddenly, I heard a noise echoing from the depths of the cave. It was faint at first, barely audible above the sound of my own heartbeat, but it grew louder and more insistent with each passing moment. Panic surged through me as I realized that I was not alone in the cave. Someone or something was watching me from the shadows, its presence lurking just out of sight. With a sense of urgency, I turned and fled from the cave, the sound of my footsteps echoing off the walls. I ran faster than I had ever run before, the fear driving me onwards, away from whatever lurked in the darkness. But as I emerged from the cave and into the sunlight, I knew that my ordeal was far from over. The symbols had awakened something ancient and malevolent, something that would stop at nothing to protect its secrets. As I continued on my journey through the mountains, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed, that the eyes of the unknown were watching me from the shadows. I pushed myself to keep going, to put as much distance between myself and the cave as possible. But no matter how far I ran, I couldn't escape the feeling of dread that hung over me like a dark cloud. In the end, I made it back to civilization unharmed, but the memory of my encounter with the cave haunted me long after I had returned home. I'm a birdwatcher, 
passionate about observing and studying rare species in their natural habitats. So, when I decided to set up camp in a bird sanctuary known for its diverse avian population, I was excited for the opportunity to witness these magnificent creatures up close. The first few days of my stay were peaceful and uneventful. I spent my days exploring the sanctuary, binoculars in hand, marveling at the beauty of the birds and their intricate behaviors. But then, one evening, as I sat by the campfire, I noticed something strange. The birds seemed agitated, their calls growing louder and more frantic by the minute. At first, I brushed it off as normal behavior, perhaps a reaction to the changing weather or the presence of a predator. But as the night wore on, their behavior became increasingly erratic. I watched in horror as flocks of birds flew in chaotic patterns, circling overhead and diving towards the ground with alarming speed. It was as if they were trying to tell me something, to warn me of an impending danger. Fear not in my insides as I realized that something was seriously wrong. But what could it be? I scanned the horizon for any signs of danger but saw nothing out of the ordinary. With a sense of unease, I retreated to my tent, hoping that whatever was causing the birds' distress would pass by unnoticed. But as I lay there, listening to their frantic calls, I couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was about to happen. Suddenly, without warning, the ground beneath me began to shake violently. I was thrown from my sleeping bag, the force of the earthquake sending me sprawling onto the ground. Panic surged through me as I realized what was happening. The birds had been trying to warn me of the impending earthquake, their strange behavior a desperate attempt to save my life. With adrenaline coursing through my veins, I scrambled to my feet and raced out of the tent, desperate to find safety before it was too late. But the ground continued to shake, the trees swaying dangerously overhead. I stumbled through the darkness, my heart pounding in my chest with each step. Branches cracked and snapped around me as I ran the earth rumbling beneath my feet. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, I spotted a clearing up ahead. With a burst of energy, I pushed myself to keep going, praying that I would reach safety in time. And then, finally, I emerged from the trees, gasping for breath and covered in dirt and sweat. I collapsed onto the ground, overcome with relief that I had survived. As I lay there, catching my breath, I couldn't help but marvel at the birds' incredible instincts. They had sensed the earthquake long before I did, warning me of the danger and guiding me to safety. From that day on, I vowed to always listen to the birds, to heed their warnings and respect their wisdom. For in their world, danger lurked around every corner, and only those who paid attention would survive. I'm an ordinary guy, and spending quality time with my son is one of life's greatest pleasures. So, when we decided to go camping together in a remote area, I was looking forward to bonding with him and enjoying the great outdoors. We arrived at the campsite early in the afternoon, eager to set up our tent and start exploring the wilderness. Everything seemed normal at first, the sun was shining, birds were chirping, and the forest was alive with the sounds of nature. But as the afternoon turned into evening, things started to take a strange turn. As we sat around the campfire, roasting marshmallows and telling stories, we heard footsteps approaching from the darkness beyond the trees. At first, we assumed it was just other campers passing by. But then, out of the shadows emerged a group of people dressed in uniforms that resembled park ranger attire. They greeted us warmly and introduced themselves as park rangers, claiming they were patrolling the area to ensure everyone's safety. I found it odd that they were out so late, but I didn't think much of it at the time. As the night wore on, however, their behavior became increasingly strange. They lingered around our campsite, watching us with intense stares and whispering amongst themselves in hushed tones. I tried to brush off my unease telling myself that I was just being paranoid. But as the hours passed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. 
Then, in the middle of the night, I woke up to the sound of someone rummaging through our belongings outside the tent. Heart pounding, I woke my son and we listened in silence as the rustling grew louder. With trembling hands, I unzipped the tent and peered outside, expecting to see a wild animal or maybe even another camper. But what I saw chilled me to the bone. It was the group of people claiming to be park rangers, rifling through our bags and taking inventory of our belongings. When they noticed me watching, their expressions turned cold and hostile, sending a shiver down my spine. I demanded to know what they were doing, but they just laughed and told me to mind my own business. Fear and anger surged through me as I realized that these people were not who they claimed to be. Without another word, I grabbed my son's hand and we fled into the forest, our hearts pounding with adrenaline as we ran for our lives. I could hear the sound of footsteps behind us, growing louder with each passing moment. We stumbled through the darkness, branches scratching at our skin and roots tripping us up at every turn. But we refused to give up, pushing ourselves to keep going despite the overwhelming sense of terror. Finally, after what felt like hours of running, we stumbled upon a clearing in the forest. Gasping for breath, we collapsed onto the ground, our bodies shaking with exhaustion and fear. As we lay there, catching our breath, I knew that we had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. Those people in the woods were up to no good, and if we hadn't gotten away when we did, who knows what they would have done to us. One day, I found myself in a situation that I never could have imagined. It started out like any other hike. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and I was enjoying the solitude of the wilderness. But as I ventured further into the forest, I realized that I had lost track of the trail. Panic began to rise in my chest as I searched desperately for any signs of civilization. I tried to retrace my steps but the dense foliage made it difficult to navigate. Just when I was starting to lose hope, I heard voices up ahead. Relieved, I pushed through the underbrush and stumbled upon another hiker family walking past. With a sense of relief, I approached them and asked for directions. But when I told them where I was trying to go, their expressions turned to confusion. They exchanged a glance before telling me that I was over 500 miles away from where I had started. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How could I have gotten so lost? Fear gripped me as I realized that I had no idea how to get back to civilization. I was stranded in the wilderness, miles from home, with no way to find my way back. The hiker family offered to help me, but I knew that it was impossible to cover such a distance on foot. Desperate, I thanked them for their offer and watched as they disappeared into the forest. Alone once again, I felt a wave of hopelessness wash over me. I had no food, no water, and no way to navigate my way out of the wilderness. As night fell, the forest grew dark and silent around me. Every rustle of the leaves and snap of a twig sent shivers down my spine. I tried to sleep, but fear kept me awake, my mind racing with thoughts of what could be lurking in the darkness. Hours passed but it felt like an eternity. I was exhausted and terrified, and I knew that I couldn't stay in the wilderness much longer. With a sense of determination, I set out once again, hoping to find some clue that would lead me back to civilization. But as I stumbled through the forest, the trees seemed to close in around me, their branches reaching out like grasping hands. Just when I was about to give up hope, I heard the sound of rushing water up ahead. With renewed energy, I pushed through the underbrush and stumbled upon a river. Relief flooded through me as I realized that this could be my ticket out of the wilderness. I followed the riverbank, hoping that it would lead me to safety. But as I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every shadow seemed to conceal some hidden threat, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. Just when I was starting to feel like I was making progress, I heard the sound of voices up ahead. With a sense of relief, 
I hurried towards the sound, hoping that it was a sign of civilization. But as I emerged from the trees, my heart sank. It was the same hiker family that I had encountered earlier. They looked at me with concern, asking if I was lost. I tried to explain my situation, but they just shook their heads in disbelief. They told me that they had been walking for hours and hadn't seen anyone else on the trail. Panic surged through me as I realized that I was truly alone in the wilderness. I had no idea how I had gotten so turned around, and I had no idea how to find my way back home. I remember passing out and waking up in a hospital bed in my local hospital. I embarked on a solo backpacking trip in the remote mountains, seeking solitude and adventure in the wilderness. The trail was rugged and challenging, but I relished the opportunity to test my skills and push myself beyond my comfort zone. As I hiked deeper into the mountains, the landscape grew increasingly wild and untamed. Towering trees loomed overhead, their branches casting long shadows across the forest floor. The air was thick with the scent of pine and earth and the only sound was the crunch of my boots on the rocky trail. I made camp in a secluded clearing, surrounded by towering cliffs and dense foliage. The sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink as I pitched my tent and prepared for the night ahead. As darkness descended, I felt a sense of exhilaration mingled with unease. The mountains seemed to come alive with unseen creatures, their presence felt but not seen. I reminded myself that I was a seasoned hiker, capable of handling whatever challenges the wilderness might throw my way. But as I settled into my sleeping bag and closed my eyes, a sense of foreboding washed over me. The forest was eerily silent, devoid of the usual nocturnal sounds of insects and animals. It was as if the entire world was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. I tried to shake off my unease and drift off to sleep but every rustle of leaves and snap of twigs outside my tent sent a shiver down my spine. I told myself it was just my imagination running wild, but deep down, I knew that something was wrong. And then I heard it, footsteps, slow and deliberate, crunching through the underbrush just beyond the perimeter of my campsite. My heart skipped a beat as I lay frozen in my sleeping bag, straining to listen to the sound. The footsteps drew closer, until they were right outside my tent, mere inches from where I lay. I held my breath, my heart pounding in my chest, as I waited for whatever was out there to make its move. Seconds stretched into eternity as I lay there in the darkness, paralyzed with fear. And then, suddenly, the footsteps stopped. The forest was silent once more, as if whatever had been stalking me had vanished into thin air. I waited for what felt like hours, but the stillness of the night remained unbroken. Eventually, exhaustion overcame my fear, and I drifted off into a fitful sleep. When I awoke the next morning, the memory of the previous night's encounter lingered like a dark cloud over my thoughts. I packed up my campsite with trembling hands, eager to put as much distance between myself and whatever had been lurking in the shadows. As I hiked back down the mountain, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes were following my every move. I quickened my pace, desperate to escape the oppressive atmosphere of the wilderness and return to the safety of civilization. When I finally emerged from the mountains and reached the trailhead, I breathed a sigh of relief, grateful to have survived my ordeal. But as I glanced back at the towering peaks looming in the distance, I couldn't help but wonder what other dangers lurked in the depths of the wilderness waiting to prey on unsuspecting hikers like myself. A group of us, close friends since childhood, decided to go on a camping trip to a remote campground nestled deep in the woods. It was the perfect opportunity to escape the stresses of everyday life and reconnect with nature. We arrived at the campground in the late afternoon, greeted by the sight of towering trees and the sound of birdsong filling the air. We set up our tents and gathered firewood for the evening ahead, 
excited for a night of storytelling and stargazing under the open sky. As the sun dipped below the horizon, we gathered around the campfire, the flames casting flickering shadows across our faces. We laughed and joked, sharing stories of our adventures and reminiscing about old times. But as the night wore on and darkness descended upon the forest, a sense of unease crept over us. The woods seemed to come alive with strange noises, rustling leaves, snapping twigs, and the eerie calls of nocturnal creatures. We tried to brush off our fears, telling ourselves it was just our imagination playing tricks on us. But then we heard it, blood-curdling screams echoing through the darkness, chilling us to the bone. We froze in terror, our hearts pounding in our chests as we strained to listen to the sounds. They seemed to be coming from the depths of the forest, far beyond the reach of our campfire's glow. Fear gripped us as we realized that we were not alone in the woods. Something sinister lurked in the darkness, something that made our blood run cold with dread. Without a word, we extinguished the campfire and huddled together in the safety of our tents, listening intently for any sign of danger. But the screams only grew louder, more desperate, as if whatever was out there was drawing closer with each passing moment. Panic set in as we realized that we were trapped, surrounded by darkness and uncertainty. We debated whether to stay and wait out the night or to make a run for it and try to find help. But before we could make a decision, we witnessed something that sent us scrambling for safety. A figure emerged from the shadows, its movements jerky and unnatural as it stumbled towards our campsite. We watched in horror as it drew closer, its features obscured by the darkness of the night. It seemed to be searching for something, its movements erratic and unpredictable. Without a second thought, we abandoned our tents and belongings, fleeing into the woods in a blind panic. We ran as fast as our legs could carry us, the sounds of the creature's screams echoing in our ears. We stumbled through the darkness, branches scratching at our faces and undergrowth tangling around our feet. Fear drove us forward, adrenaline coursing through our veins as we fought to escape whatever lurked in the shadows. Finally, we burst through the tree line and into the open clearing, gasping for breath and trembling with fear. We dared not look back, afraid of what we might see lurking in the darkness behind us. As we caught our breath and tried to make sense of what had just happened, we vowed never to return to that cursed campground again. The memory of those blood-curdling screams would haunt us for the rest of our days. I'm an outdoor writer, and I've always been fascinated by the stories of haunted forests. So when I heard about a particular forest rumored to be haunted by a vengeful spirit, I knew I had to investigate. I packed my camping gear and set out for the forest, eager to uncover the truth behind the legend. The forest was dense and foreboding, the trees looming over me like silent sentinels. As I set up my campsite, a sense of unease settled over me, as if the very air was charged with an otherworldly energy. But I brushed aside my fears and focused on my task. I lit a fire and began to research the legend of the vengeful spirit, poring over old newspaper clippings and eyewitness accounts. As the night wore on, I began to hear strange noises coming from the forest. Branches snapped, and leaves rustled, but when I ventured outside to investigate, I found nothing but darkness and silence. But then, as I sat by the fire, I heard a voice calling out to me from the depths of the forest. It was faint and ethereal, like a whisper on the wind, but it sent shivers down my spine. I tried to ignore it and focus on my work, but the voice grew louder and more insistent, as if demanding to be heard. With a sense of trepidation, I followed the sound deeper into the forest, my heart pounding in my chest with each step. What I found there was beyond anything I could have imagined. Standing before me was a figure, shrouded in darkness, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. It was the vengeful spirit, come to claim its next victim. I tried to run, but my feet felt like they were rooted to the spot. The spirit advanced towards me, its form shifting and changing with each step. I could feel its malevolent presence pressing in on me from all sides, suffocating me with fear. 
With a cry of terror, I broke free from its grasp and fled into the darkness, the sound of its laughter echoing in my ears. I ran until my lungs burned and my legs gave up beneath me, collapsing onto the forest floor in exhaustion. But the spirit was relentless, pursuing me through the forest with single-minded determination. I could feel its icy breath on the back of my neck, its fingers reaching out to grab me and drag me into the darkness. With every ounce of strength left in me, I pushed myself to keep running, to escape the nightmare that pursued me through the night. And when I finally emerged from the forest, battered and bruised but alive, I was grateful. My partner and I decided to escape the hustle and bustle of the city for a romantic weekend getaway. We found the perfect spot by a secluded lake, far from the noise and distractions of everyday life. It was just what we needed to reconnect and unwind. We set up camp near the water's edge, the sound of the gentle lapping waves lulling us into a sense of peace and tranquility. We spent the day hiking through the surrounding wilderness, exploring hidden trails and marveling at the beauty of nature. As night fell, we built a campfire and roasted marshmallows under the starlit sky. We laughed and joked, enjoying each other's company and the simple pleasure of being together. But as we settled into our sleeping bags and drifted off to sleep, a sound broke the silence of the night. At first, it was just a faint splashing noise, barely audible over the rustling of the trees and the chirping of crickets. I nudged my partner awake, my heart pounding in my chest as I strained to listen. The splashing grew louder, more frantic, echoing through the darkness like a distant cry for help. We exchanged worried glances, unsure of what to do. We were miles from civilization, with no one around to help us if something went wrong. But curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to investigate. We grabbed our flashlights and ventured out into the night, following the sound of the splashing as it grew louder and more insistent. As we neared the lake, the air grew thick with tension, the darkness pressing in around us like a heavy blanket. We reached the water's edge and shone our flashlights out across the surface, searching for any sign of movement. And then we saw it. A figure was thrashing about in the water, their arms flailing wildly as they struggled to stay afloat. Without hesitation, we dove into the lake, swimming out towards the figure as fast as we could. The water was icy cold against our skin, sending shivers down our spines as we fought against the current. But as we drew closer, we realized with horror that something was terribly wrong. The figure wasn't struggling to stay afloat, they were thrashing in a frenzy panic, as if something was pulling them under. We reached out to grab them, but they slipped through our fingers like smoke, disappearing beneath the surface with a final, desperate cry. We searched frantically, diving down into the murky depths in a desperate attempt to find them. But it was no use. They were gone, swallowed up by the darkness of the lake. We surfaced, gasping for breath, our hearts heavy with grief and disbelief. We had come to the lake for a romantic weekend getaway, but instead, we had stumbled upon a tragedy. We returned to our campsite in silence, our minds reeling with questions and doubts. Who was the figure in the water? What had happened to them? And why had we been the only ones to witness their final moments? As we lay awake in our tent, haunted by the memory of what we had seen, a sense of unease settled over us like a dark cloud. We couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong with the lake, that it held secrets far more sinister than we could ever imagine.